Hey there, thanks for joining me for the screencast today. What I'd like to do is show you how to do client-side CRUD operations using the web data grid. Now, as for an example, let me show you uh, a grid that's, that has everything set up here. Basically, we have um, this grid bound to, to some, some data, uh, some person objects here. So in order to do client-side CRUD, what we'll want to do is add items to the grid, delete items, and update items. Now the updates you kind of get basically for free because I can come in here and make a change to, well really a number of different items here. And then I can click the update button and basically the changes that have been made to the items in the grid are now updated on the server. Now this is client side CRUD so you notice that we didn't do any post backs. That's achieved by wrapping the grid in an update panel making the changes on the grid and just initiating a post back. I didn't have to do any sort of click handlers or anything special. Just posting back to the server will persist those changes to the data source. And the way we made that client was, again, to, to put it in an update panel. So that was easy. That was very easy. Now there's some script involved that you need to, to write in order to do the deleting and the inserting. But basically, once we turn on the, the selection behaviors, we can come through and select particular rows and just say that we want to delete that item. You'll notice there was a, a little indicator there that showed up as it was processing. And then I can come in here as well and say uh, gymnasium and add him to the list as well. So uh, there's actually not a lot of code. There's a few pieces that you have to glue together in order to make everything work right. But let me go ahead and drop into Visual Studio and show you how it's done. Okay, so here I am with a standard web form and I have a number of uh, items already built up on the page um, just to, to speed things up a little bit. So obviously anytime that we're working with the web data grid we need to have the script manager on the page. Um, this is important because again we're doing many things on the client and this will, is the control that handles bringing up the, the right scripts that we need up to the client. Then we have an update panel and, and like I told you before when we're working with the update scenario with uh, updating the data in our grid the functionality that you need for doing the CRUD operations, as long as you're bound to a data source control, it, it will just kind of work for you. So once we have this update panel and the, the grid is served to the user, they can make changes for as, as many of the different cells that they want and it, you just need to do a post back. And so in order to make it so the page doesn't do a full post back, we wrapped in an update panel. And then down here at the bottom, you can see I have this button here with the text of update, which is what you saw on the page. And you'll notice there's no click handler here. There, there's no code that needs to be written in code behind in order to make that happen. So we've got our web data grid, uh, auto, rate, auto generate columns equal to false, our data source ID, we're pointing to object data source. I'm gonna go through that in just a moment. The data key fields here is set to ID, and this is basically pointing to the primary key column within our table, or in the event that we're using an object data source, basically the primary key or the unique identifier within the object that we're working with. We've got a couple columns bound here. We've got uh, our first name column and our last name column, and this is basically the, the required things. We have some text to show up in the header, which is first name, and then the key. So this is a unique, unique identifier for the column itself with, inside the grid. So we have first name and last name. So that's some, some basic, easy stuff. Now there's another input control right here. You'll see that this is what we're using for deleting. And this is not a server button. This is a just standard HTML input button. And we're using some client script that we're going to write. We're mapping it to a function named DEL. You, the delete keyword is a reserved word in JavaScript, so you can't name it delete. So I called it DEL. And we will write the body of that, that function in just a, a few minutes here. So that's the grid and the update panel and some of the buttons. So here's our object data source. We're pointing over to a, a type name or a class of person repository. That class has a method for get all, which we'll use for selecting, insert for adding items to the, the collection, delete for removing them from the collection, and then obviously update for making changes to items that are already in the collection. Now the thing with our object data source is that we don't want it to always be creating new instances of our person repository with each one of the operations that it tries to do. So the way you get around that in order to provide um, the, the instance that you need is you have this on object creating event handler. And so go into code behind and this is really the only code that needed to be written for the sample. 
And you'll notice here that on object creating or the ODS object creating event handler, we just go into the event args of this, this uh, event handler and say the object instance is equal to something. And in this case, it's our repository instance. Now, this really here, this type here, the web state repository is just what I use for demos because I want to be able to provide these demos to you without having to hook up to a database and worry about whether or not you have the tables and all that kind of stuff. So basically, this little class here allows me to save the collections that are generated into session state. So this is not the type of thing that you would do in your applications. This is just done for this demo's purposes. But really, the, the bottom line is, is in, at this line here, this is where you would set the object instance of the object repo or the object data source to the instance of your repository or whatever class you're working with. And then I have this page pre-render here. Um, this is basically the, the last um, item, the last event that is running before the page is done and, and renders the HTML up to the client. And basically, I'm just telling the repository to persist the changes, saving everything back to session state. Again, this is code that you probably wouldn't have in your application, but needed for this type of a demo. So the important part is what's happening with the object data source. So now that we've covered that, there's a, if you remember from, from our sample, we had two text boxes. We had the first name and the last name. And so this will allow the, um, someone to go in and type in a first name and last name and click on, again, not a server control, but a regular HTML input type and uh, run a function called add. And again, we'll write the JavaScript for that in just a moment in order to add data into the, the grid and effectively the data source of the grid. So now that we've kind of reviewed everything that's on this page, let's switch over to design view and go into the behaviors editor of the grid. And from here, there's a few things that we want to do. Now we're editing the values within the grid, so we'll turn on cell editing, row adding, and also row deleting. And this little dialog here says that the deleting is, is based upon the selection behavior because you want to delete an or you want to select an entire row before you delete it. So that went and turned on row selectors and selection for us. So the final piece of customization that we need to do is to go into the selection behavior and customize this just a little bit. So the cell click action, we want to be able to set up or, or basically select the entire row. And so that, that is set to row. And then all we need to do is come into the selection client events. And we're going to handle one of these events here. And this is the row selection changed. So let's map this over to a function that we'll write, and we'll just call this on row selection changed. And basically what's happening here is as you select different rows, um, we'll, we'll tap into that event and find out the key, the data key for the row, so that we can use that in order to do the deleting. So we have the behaviors now defined for the grid. We can hop back over to our, our markup here and start writing some scripts. So let's open up a script tag. And the first thing that we want to do is declare a variable that will hold the data key for us. So we'll call this var selected data key. And we'll initialize it to nothing basically. And now what we can do is start to define the function that we created for on row selection changed. Now this is going to have a sender and event args. And what's happening inside here is we'll take a look at the event args and get the selected rows. And from that selected row collection, we'll find the one that we have selected and then get out the data key so that we know how to uniquely identify the row within the grid. So we'll create a, a variable here for the rows. And then we'll do event args dot get selected rows. And then we'll get the selected row. Now we set up the grid to only do single row selection. So we can safely come in and say rows get item, and then go to the zero index. So we're basically getting the first selected row 
we'll know that that will work there. And then we can set the selected data key uh, from the selected row. And then we can just call get data key. So at this point, as each one of the rows is selected, it will run this function and we'll have a value for the data key. So in order to facil facilitate deleting, we'll just create the, the, the del function. And this will work out to being, we want to find out if the selected data key has a value. And if it does, we'll do something. If it does not, we'll do something really simple like just alert with a message that says, please select a row. So if we do have a data key, then what we, what we need to first do is get an instance of our grid. And we can do that by running the MS Ajax function called find. And we want to tap into getting the client ID of our web data grid. So that will, this string right here will emit out the client ID that's generated for the grid. And then we can look at the individual rows that are inside the grid. Grid.getRows. And from there, then we can find uh, a specific row that we want to target to delete. And then we can go to rows dot get row from key and then we can pass in the selected data key. Now that we have our row, all we simply need to do is go to the rows collection and call the remove function, passing in the row. And the second argument here is a little unintuitive. If you look in the debugger, it's named non-committing. And so it, I don't know, it depends on how you look at it, it seems maybe a little bit backwards. But in order to commit the, the, the remove, we need to pass in a false. So we want to tell it to commit. So yeah, get that. you might want to get that straight in your mind. So in order to commit the change, you want to pass in a false to that second parameter. So that's our, our del or delete function. And then we simply need to do the add function. And in order to make this happen, all we're going to do is take a look at the grid and find its rows and then create an array with the values that need to pa be passed into the grid. And we'll do that just by looking at the input controls that are on the page already and, and pass that into an add method. So again, we'll, we'll get an instance of our grid. We'll just copy this from up here. You know, you could even wrap this up into a single function in order to have to avoid the clipboard inheritance, but I'm going to keep this the same as the article that I wrote. And we'll say var rows equals grid get rows once again. And then we're going to create a new person. And like I said before, it's simply an array of the values that you need to pass in. So here's our array initializer, and then we can say get the value from a couple controls here. So from here, we're looking at the first name. And down here, we're looking at the last name. And just to review, if you remember down here at the bottom, we have the, our input text types. The ID is first name, the ID is last name. So it's the data coming out of these text boxes. We'll come back here. So now we have our array. And then off of the rows collection, we can call add and pass in our new person array. That, that's all there is to it. Let's, let's run the page. And we should be able to add, delete, and update values within our grid. So here we're displaying the, the default data. I can come in and let's do let's be crazy and try doing two at once. So we'll just change his name to Philip. So here's an update, and then we're going to um, force a post back by sending a delete command. So we'll we'll delete building from our our grid here, and Philip's 
change should remain and it did persist and then we can come back in and add gymnasium and so we have our change to fill up the removal of building and our add of gymnasium so I hope this gives you everything that you need to do in order to conduct client-side CRUD operations with the web data grid Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.